No, our computers work. Uh, uh, okay. Well, no. Screen sharing has failed. Uh, Corey, can you confirm or somebody confirm that's working? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're all good. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so I have this ridiculous title because Corey insisted I give him a title fairly quickly. This is what I came up with. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I can see a few familiar names in the uh, in here, but if you don't know me, I'm Rob. Um, during the day, I'm lead developer for a prop, prop tech company in the UK, and then at night or weekends, I'm making stupid websites, little little tools and things like that. Um, and you can probably tell from my accent, I'm in the UK. Uh, so, so yeah, let us get started. So, I think probably most of us, like if we start with a website, we're okay. We've got a blog. Maybe I'll add an about page. You know, okay, my website's working. I can do some blog posts. You know, the, the obviously the first one where you say, "This is my new blog," and I'm going to do some more blogging. And then maybe add a couple more pages. You add a now page, maybe some photos, that kind of thing. And then a few months pass, and you end up like this. Um, or maybe you don't. Maybe that's just me. Uh, and I end up looking like this when I'm trying to explain to people how my website works. Um, so that is what I'm going to attempt to do today, at least some of it. Um, so let's get to this here. So there's, although my site is an Eleventy site, there's really three core components going on here to, that I use to keep everything running. The first is Echo, which I'll, I'll give some more details about all of these in a second. But um, so Echo is sort of, it started as a cross-posting tool that I built, um, but I'm now using it to pull content in, um, write to GitHub, that kind of thing. Uh, of course, then you have JSON data files in 11T, which I've got. Some are hard-coded, some are pulled from my API server. Um, and then obviously markdown files, um, you know, directly in the project. Um, so yeah, as I said, Echo started as a tool just to take an RSS feed and cross post originally to microblog. And then I added Mastodon. Um, it now supports webhooks, writing to GitHub. Um, you can save links to link ace. There's some talk of somebody's building discord support for it so that it's got a whole bunch of tools, but essentially it's just reading RSS feeds and then it can send them out to different services. Um, so this is what I'm using um, for a lot of the stuff that I'm pulling in. Um, so if we, there's an example. Um, I used Letterboxd, the service for reviewing movies. Um, so I post a review and they don't, well, they do have an API, but you can't get access to it. Um, so I use the RSS feed my new the reviews go into there. Echo then picks that up and it then writes that file to GitHub directly and then the site gets triggered to be built. Um so you can see here um this is what one of the commits would look like. And then that goes to my site, which then gets built. Echo will then pick that up from my site's RSS feed and then post that to Mastodon. So we're sort of going around in circles a few times before it actually gets posted out and people can see it. <laughs> Apologies. Um, one of the other things I'm doing to cross post, because obviously you can just take the title and the link, um, but there's instances where I want to include the content that I've put on the blog posts. Um, so what I did was added some custom data in the JSON feed, um, which is supported by the spec. Um, and in in the Eleventy build, I have a custom filter for this. Um, because you have the uh, the limit for the the length of posts on Mastodon, but they the way it works is any link of any length is considered to be twenty three characters. So you have to take those 
um, to actually get an accurate account, and you have to replace those links and get account and that kind of thing. Um, and then if I include tags, those will get included as hashtags as well when they get cross-posted. Um, the, the second part is probably the most complicated part, which is my API server, and calling an API is probably um, a little bit of a stretch. It's more like a, a bucket of node scripts that run on, on a schedule at various different times. Um, so I'm pulling in a bunch of data um, with this as, as podcasts, um, my last FM music uh, listening history, um, a full archive of my um, my posts on Mastodon, which I'm actually not using at the moment, but it's still being collected anyway. Um, and also my, my Lego collection as well. Um, so uh, to give you some idea of... <laughs> these get written to json files on the api server and then my site will pull those in as as data files um to give you some idea this is what the data uh folder looks like in my 11e site um there's a lot going on here um so i have to really selectively cache things to make sure that my build doesn't take half an hour to build while it pulls in all this data um so as an example of what the api server is doing to to get my overcast history um there isn't an api to uh to fight to get um all of the podcasts that i've listened to um so it uses a python script which logs into the site downloads the export that overcast offers and then there's a node script which reads that file and outputs it into the format i need so that i can pull it into my 11 site um and i've run that uh, I think on a weekly basis because I, I don't necessarily need up to date information for that. Um, and then when that gets output on my site, um, I didn't obviously include the fifteen hundred episodes, um, but it's there if you <laughs> if you so desire to go and have a look at that. There is a full list of every episode of podcasts I've listened to for the last six or seven years. Um, And the the other example from the API um, is uh, my Lego collection. Uh, so I have somewhere in the region about two hundred sets, I think. Um, so I track those with Brickset, which is a um, you know a a website for keeping track. You know they have a full database of every set, that kind of thing. Um, but I want to show this on my website as well, rather than just linking out to them. Um, so every time I I buy a new set, um, I run this script which calls their api pulls down my collection along with images and that kind of thing it then writes it to a json file and then that can be pulled into 11 um and similarly with the podcast i then you know show the the full collection on my site which you can you know you can see if you're interested um but yeah that has all the images and then that just links back out to brickset again um one of the other things i do on my site which I feel like the longer I've sort of added things to it, the more I found this helps me is um, using data files for even things where, you know, this, this page, this is my project page. Um, you can see at the bottom there. And I could just, you know, I could just write this out in Markdown or, or you know, HTML in that page. But I find knowing that all of the data is in that data directory just makes life a lot easier. I can go, right, okay, I may need to add a new project. I'll just go and add it here. Um, you know, I can add descriptions and uh, images and everything else that I need to add there. Um, so that that the the screenshot I showed in my data um, directory also has a lot of this kind of stuff in there as well. Um, it, all of this is a little bit complicated, but it, it seems pretty reasonable. I think maybe where I started to lose my mind a bit was this, which is the custom CLI I have for my site for <laughs> creating uh, new posts, uh, link posts, which is a new uh, new thing I'm doing. Um, I can also add change logs. I can add a new project and add a new game is similarly to the Lego collection. I have a, a JSON file, which is my um, console game collection. Um, and the CLI, you know, handles everything you expect it to. Um, it will title case the title I give it, create a slug. Um, I can add multiple tags, that kind of thing. Um, if I'm doing a link post, it will ask for, um, you know, the author's Mastodon account, that kind of thing. 
Um, so that all gets included. Um, and then I feel like the biggest thing is that it puts the new file exactly where I need it. So in this case, for me, it's source posts. And then if it's a blog post, it goes on the blog and it will just write that file. All the metadata is exactly as I expect. I'm not going to miss anything, um, which depending on how complicated your site gets is an easy thing to do, especially if you've got tags and preview images, that kind of thing. Um, it's pretty much since I've started using this, everything has been a lot easier. It's way easier to add a blog post or a link, that kind of thing. Um, and I tend, I still mess up. I mean, my typos are terrible, but you know, people point those out within two seconds of the post being published. Um, so yeah, I mean, that that's just a sort of small selection of, the things I'm doing there. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, all of this is on GitHub for anyone to you know take a look at and ask me questions, that kind of thing. I'm more than happy to try and help people out with setting this kind of stuff up. Um, I feel like maybe I've gone through quite quickly, but um, yeah, so that's if there's I'm so happy for any questions, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, thank you. Oh, that's awesome. I might have to steal the CLI. <laughs> <laughs> or, I don't know. It'll probably be a process of me breaking it and then <laughs> and then getting it to work. But yeah, happy to open it up to questions. Um, we'll have the talks posted on YouTube and then uh, there is the 11 me conference that's coming up that Zach has been heavily promoting on Mastodon. Yep. And uh, yeah, it's a good question, Bob. <laughs>